and traffic APIs. So how did you uh, like, did you manage to hear Melias? Uh, just the last few minutes, so not not unfortunate mm -hmm. at all. Since I was preparing for the presentation, it would have been great to hear more. <laughs> so our kind of self-driving cars and these traffic lights and 5G are they kind of in your scope already, or they are? So we, we are looking quite a bit on kind of all types of intelligent uh, vehicles, not just cars, mm -hmm. but also uh, vessels. Um, airplanes and stuff like that um, you have to remember that it's not a kind of immediate jump to full autonomy level five autonomy but mm -hmm. it would be a gradual journey and probably will take some 10 20 years before we have the level five level five full autonomy mm -hmm. uh, in different um, different types of um, um, vehicles and uh, of course for certain use cases the autonomy is much easier to implement. So, for example, if you have, if you have short uh, distance ferries, ferries that are going mm -hmm. kind of yeah. 200 meters back and forth, it's pretty easy to implement even level five autonomy compared to, say, a car that should be driving in the Finnish winter in the middle of the night. Not that trivial anymore. Yeah, but of and course, the EU, yeah. EU is. Um, it's actually giving a directive starting year 2022. In two years, all the new cars need assisted driving, for example, to detect kind of ahead objects coming ahead. So it's coming gradually. That's right. So level two autonomy, kind of partial assistance to the driver. Uh, there's quite a bit of cars already providing some level of that. But uh, getting to level three, level four, level five, which is the full autonomy in all kinds of situations, you're still quite far from that. Yeah, but it's interesting that, for example, in, in you mentioned ferries, but but there is already kind of uh, parts of uh, the marine traffic that can be more easily kind of made autonomous. So like for example, the the autonomous mooring processes so when the right. ship comes to the shore and attaches it to itself to the the pier so that is already possible and, and in, in many places can be automated but that is then the problem of not necessarily the APIs would probably be the least of the problem but I understand that, that it's the kind of the whole guiding system and also the physical setup in the um, uh, kind of the piers and uh, that, that is and in the ships, that is actually the problem. That's correct. And it's not just about technology. So, if, for example, if you talk about vessels, they have to be uh, class approved. It takes quite a bit of time. The other part is, especially if you talk about vessels that go into the international waters, you would have to change the legislation of IMO. Uh, the biggest parties in IMO are countries like India and the Philippines where there's huge amount of crew coming from those countries, they probably don't have that big an incentive to reduce headcount in vessels. So yeah. it, it will be, it shall be a significant political fight to mm -hmm. also change the kind of marine traffic regulations, not just implementing the technology. Yeah, so this is again, again, so kind of case of change. And, and yeah. the case of business model and, and even outsourcing, insourcing or, or resourcing the kind of people versus automation. And that is always the kind of, which it's a problem, but it is, of course, a kind of society level issue that actually yeah. um, DXS Hanna will be talking about this kind of is our society set for data and platform economy tomorrow in his in her keynote and, and this is kind of one of those things that we need to all consider that while we could automate everything and it might make things things faster and more cost optimized and safer and, and things like that then what is the kind of human impact and should that be uh, figured out or not what what actually um, Mark Boyd was talking a little bit also today in, in his keynote. Okay, so I think that we are now ready to rock and roll with Janne, your presentation. And you have this kind of very, I don't know, I have to call it almost a sexy topic, which is like 60 million API calls, day delivering best traffic 
per, per day delivering best traffic information in the world. So it's like a almost a clickbait title. Mm. <laughs> so I tried to do it. Maybe it's one. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Mary, and we'll see you again in the Q&A. And, and um, I'll leave Janne, you to share your slides and start the presentation. All right, thank you much. Let me check if you can hear me okay, if you, oops, if you can see me okay and, and my sharing. Yes, we can. And, and uh, just a note, Maria will leave the place and I will leave the place now, so then we leave you to it. Oh. All right. So, good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is Janne Lautanala. I'm the uh, Chief Ecosystem and Technology Officer for Traffic Management Finland, which is a government-owned organization being responsible of traffic management and control in all traffic modes in Finland. Here's my contact information should you want to contact me after this session or connect with me in LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter, please feel free to do so. So Traffic Management Finland, as I uh, already told, we are responsible of air, air navigation, railway traffic, road traffic and marine time traffic so the traffic management and control in all of these modes of transport and uh, our goals are ensuring smooth and safe traffic and uh, providing the traffic management and of course also developing new services and enabling new business opportunities we are facing pretty pretty significant changes in the org in, in, in the society and here are some of the global mega trends that are also affecting traffic so we have first of all we have the urbanization there are more and more people moving in to cities which means that there are more people which means that there are more traffic in the cities and it, it creates congestion and and other problems in in traffic we have of course digitalization which means we have more and more information and data available from different sources including the vehicles uh, we have the apis available we have the possibility of utilizing that data in intelligent ways but we also have for example sharing economy which will impact traffic quite a bit so it's much easier to share vehicles it's easier to utilize for example e-scooters for the last miles etc and of course climate change uh, will have a significant impact into traffic for example in finland the finnish government has set the target to reduce the traffic related co2 emissions by 50 percent by year 2030 so in 10 years time and of course that requires significant changes in how we are executing traffic in finland uh, whether that's modes of uh, or the whether that need means that we need to move more to public transport or inc increase the amount of uh, e vehicles in the, in in the roads but also other means that can uh, reduce the the emissions and of course covid-19 uh, the current, current pandemic we have in place and let's be honest nobody knows for sure how long this lasts and what are the impacts on for example to what extent people are willing to travel to what extent they are willing to use public transport etc etc but uh, even today there's huge amount of traffic uh, in finland uh, for example, we have 280,000 controlled flights a year. We have half a million controlled train services a year. Every single day, around 1.3 million public transport boardings are taking place. Uh, our, our ports are, are having huge amount of uh, ships coming and going uh, every year, around 30,000, etc., etc. And out of these different uh, traffic events, 
there's huge amount of da data that's being gathered about the where the particular uh, vehicle or car or or airplane or or vessel is what type of um, um, speeds they are having etc cetera, etc cetera. and wouldn't it be great if we had all this data available through open apis in a scalable reliable platform and it wouldn't it be great if we had that uh, available for all the parties free of charge uh, easily well we actually do so digit traffic is um, the platform operated by traffic management finland where we have open data available through open apis and we have road traffic data we have rail traffic data and we have marine traffic data um, and what we would like to do is not just have our data but also enrich that with other parties data so we would like to offer the possibility to all the parties collect combine sh and share and even in some cases invoice traffic related data so basically what we are doing is we are promoting an ecosystem based approach for gathering and delivering data from all the kind of areas of traffic in Finland through a easy to use single platform. We have data from different sources. So currently we have mainly from the public sector, but we are looking at uh, also companies and other organizations from Finland and from other countries to utilize our platform for the delivery of the data. And of course, consumers or normal people who are out there in roads, in railroads, etc., uh, are a very, very valuable source uh, of information, especially if you think about the feedback loop. If there's data that's incorrect, we can utilize consumers or, or traffic users for correcting that data. So basically, we want to provide the right data for the right target groups and the data can be open and free, or it can be subject to charge uh, if the party that owns the data uh, wishes so. So we are today a, a, a producer of traffic data, especially the traffic, real-time traffic situation, but we are also offering this uh, platform for other parties for uh, to act as a marketplace um, for delivery of the data. Of course, we can't do this alone or nobody can do this alone so it, it, we we need to work together together with the operators uh, different uh, traffic players in the field but we want to be open equal and market based uh, so that we are not messing up the, the 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 kind of traffic market here uh, we believe that if we create the digital layer uh, on top of the physical layer of, of roads and railroads and other parts, uh, it means that we really can create best of breed uh, <coughs> digital traffic ecosystem uh, to Finland. <coughs> here are some, well, for the geeks out there, here are some uh, examples of, of the data that we have available. So for example, in roads, we have the current free flow speeds, current road uh, weather forecast uh, out there. All of these are available if you just go to digitraffic.fi. And we actually have more than 100 APIs out there available for road, railroads, marine, and all the APIs are documented in Swagger. We have more than 10 million API calls on average per day occasionally it's more than 20 million uh, but on the average it's around 10 million api calls per day and we have more than one terabytes of data delivered every single day there's free support available uh, so the main means of support is discussion forum in in google groups uh, but of course there's peer support also available and and more detailed support should you need to have that. So 
to give a flavor of, of what can be accomplished, here are a, a few examples what other parties have done uh, with the help of our data. So first of all, we have kasvuvyöhyke.fi. Um, they have taken our data uh, from railroads and they are visualizing how uh, the different trains are traveling across Finland uh, through single day and also gathering the statistics. So for example, what is the amount of uh, amount of trains per day and how it has been evolving over time. So very neat visualization of um, how railroads and, and trains are moving in Finland. I can actually show another example uh, live from the site. So here's an, um, their example of marine traffic. So during the Gulf of Botnia, Baltic Sea, you can have a look on the details of a vessel. Uh, what is its name? What is its category? What is the ship type? What is the draught? And over time, uh, during a single day, how are they traveling across the, the sea? These different uh, color codes or colors uh, describe different uh, uh, vessel categories. So it's very visual, very easy to understand and, and really easily gives a grasp on, on how traffic situation in, in, in the seas currently look like. Um, one more example oops one more example is um, this is from a very very fairly small company in in turku called tietorahti um, it's actually a one man company and they have very very quickly created a mobile application for truck drivers and transport planners so basically typically small trucks that are doing delivery here and there or utilizing the roads for um, transport uh, with the trucks uh, you have to take into account not just uh, the speed limits and whatnot but also limitations on bridges um, if, if you're going over a bridge or under a bridge or whatever so there might be height limitation there might be weight limitations uh, this and that and the application actually provides uh, the details of the limitation from a truck perspective um, it gives you information on where are the gas stations, what type of services these gas stations provide you, uh, etc. It also uh, gives the availability of unloading areas. So these green dots out here uh, tell that in the city of Turku, in the city center, these are the unloading areas. And if it's green, it actually means that it's available. If it's red, it's taken. It's using induction technology to detect whether there's a truck on top of the uh, unloading area. Uh, another point is that um, in the city of Turku, they have a problem that uh, normal people uh, take these unloading areas and park their cars uh, there, even though it's illegal. So basically, Tietorasti has created a simple in interface uh, where the trucks can uh, inform the authorities that hey this particular unloading area is is now taken uh, and and somebody should come and uh, find this uh, car owner for parking in an illegal place another example is the road work so especially in finland in in summer there's a huge amount of road works they come and go uh, but this provides a, a great visibility to roadworks and other maintenance uh, things how things are going uh, in, in 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 roads in in finland uh, one more example is our own liikennetilanne uh, or traffic situation service uh, that's available both as a mobile application if you haven't downloaded it already please do liikennetilanne from your play store or apple store or you can alternatively go to uh, to the website liikennetilanne.tmfg.fi and it actually provides information both for air traffic, marine traffic, railroads uh, and, and roads. 
as an example, it provides the uh, in real time information of road traffic incidents, road works, uh, road conditions. So if there are any any problems on the road, it gives you during the winter, it gives you the real time information whether a particular road has been uh, salted, so for example, or whether there has been a maintenance work on a certain part of, of, of road. With the ports, it gives you the information, what are the vessels coming and departing at which time. And actually also the same information is coming for the airport. So what are the departing and arriving flights? Um, so we are getting this information from, from Finnavia, but very conveniently, we are actually gathering the real-time overall traffic situation from Finland, including, for example, these traffic cameras. So you can have a real-time look on how does traffic look like, for example, in Kehäyks or Ring 1 in Finland, uh, and whether there's congestion or not, what is the free, what is the current uh, average speed of the cars going past a certain uh, point, et cetera, et cetera. So huge amount of information. I think this is a little bit of information overflow, but what, what we try to do with this one is showcase all the parties easily, what type of data is available and what can be accomplished with the help of this data. So, uh, so call to action. We actually need your help. We would like to see more and more uh, of you utilizing and enriching this data in order to, of course, we would like to see the increase in traffic safety and optimization and smoothening of travel and logistics. And of course, everybody has a, uh, the uh, goal to reduce CO2 emissions uh, in the world. But also we would like to see you creating new business models, new applications, uh, not just for traffic industry, but also, for example, for related industry, whether that's uh, travel or or retail or, or this or that. There are a huge amount of different industries that should utilize and leverage the data uh, from traffic that we have easily available right now. But also, it would be great to hear your feedback. So we have done quite a bit of work, but and, and I really hope that there are plenty of things that work well. It would be great to hear that from you. But also, what are the things that could work better? How can we improve? And especially, how can we help you? So we are more than happy to help you out uh, with your efforts, give more information or, or support or connect with the right people. So if you have any needs on that, you would like to learn more or, or you have any ideas, please do be in contact with your ideas and, and, and thoughts for additional support. We are more than happy to help you out. So in summary, the traffic around the world is going through a major, major disruption. There's gonna be significantly different in 20 years time compared to what it's now. So I think that's, that's a given fact that traffic is going through a major disruption. The disruption creates huge amount of opportunities and, and there are big opportunities for improving the performance of the traffic logistics industry, as well as other connected industries, utilizing data and analytics. And this disruption and this big opportunity for improvement creates huge amount of opportunities for the, all the parties who are utilizing this data. So there will be plenty of opportunities for you to be part of that positive change and at the same time make this planet a much much better place to live in thank you very much